Okay, so this is problem 4.30 out of Griffith's Quantum Mechanics. And we're given an electron in a spin state. And we want to determine the normalization constant, find the expectation values of our spin, find the uncertainties, and then confirm our results with the uncertainty principle. So before I start this, uh, I have a new mic. So just let me know what you think about that, if you think this helps or not. Um, and then also, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel and liking the video, I'll keep posting more and more videos. Um, we actually hit a thousand subscribers not that long ago, so that's really awesome. I think we might hit 1100 pretty soon. Okay, but with all that, all that out of the way, let's actually get into solving the problem. So our spin state, chi, is A times the matrix 3i, 4. Okay. So, to calculate our normalization constant, we simply take our inner product, and that has to be equal to 1. So this is the exact same idea behind our um, wave function, and the way that we normalize our wave function. So, when we do that, we're going to get A dagger minus 3i4 uh, oops 3i4 minus 3i4 and then a 3i4 so that's what the dagger is doing it's a complex conjugate um, transpose so we slap a negative with our i and then our rows turn into columns. And this needs to equal 1. So that turns into our magnitude squared. And then we have our matrix minus 3i4, 3i4. And that is pretty straightforward. That'll be minus 3i times 3i plus 4 times 4 that needs to be equal to 1 so this is 9 plus 16 which is 25 maybe you can hear my dog with that with the new mic here so we have our constant squared 25 equals 1 or solving for a a equals 1 over 5. So that's pretty straightforward. Now we want to find our expectation values for our spin in the x, y, and z direction. And this is exactly the same way we would calculate expectation values with our wave function. So all that we're going to do is in between our chi's here we're going to squish in our s of x. So s of x is going to be h bar over 2 and then the poly spin matrices. And in this case, sigma sub x is 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay. So let's go ahead and calculate this. So we're obviously going to get our a squared, which we know is 1 over 25. So I'm just going to put that out front. And then we're going to have minus 3i, 4. So again, complex conjugate transpose times h bar over 2. And then this matrix and then 3i4 okay so the h bar over 2 that can just be moved out front so that'll be h bar over 50 and then the next thing we're going to do so we'll do 3i4 is multiply our two matrices 
So hopefully you're okay with multiplying matrices and that gets you four and three I. Which is eight bar over 50. And then again, multiplying it, you can probably see what's going to happen here. You're gonna get minus 12 I plus 12 I. Obviously this is zero. So your expectation value for SX is zero. What about the other ones? Well, it's essentially going to follow the exact same procedure, so nothing too crazy. And as always, the A is not going to be affected by any of this, so we can always factor that out. And then 3i4. Uh, it's worth noting, so SY the poly spin matrix is 0 minus i i 0 so essentially all we're going to do is plug that into here okay so we're still going to have our 8 bar over 2 0 minus i i 0 and then 3 i 4 so I'm just going to erase this for room, but that's the only real difference here. Again, the H bar over 2, that can just be moved in the front. And what do we get? We get minus 4i, and then 3i squared. So i squared is negative 1, so this just becomes minus 3 and now when we multiply this h bar over 50 let's see you're gonna get minus 12 i squared so that's 12 and then um, minus 12 um, I think I am missing a sign somewhere. Ah, right here. I was about to say that shouldn't be zero. So that makes this negative. So this will be minus uh, 24 h bar over 50. And 2 goes into both of those, so minus 12 over 25 h bar. And there's no other way to simplify that, so that is all we have to do there. SZ, again, we're going to follow this same process where SZ is h bar over 2, the appropriate matrix, which will be 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Okay, so we have minus 3i4, our constant, which was 1 over 25, and there's the h bar over 2, so that'll be h bar over 50, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, and then 3i4. Okay, so h bar over 50. Multiplying these matrices together, let's see, that's going to be 3, well, let's write this out first. That's going to be 3i minus 4. So we have h bar over 50. And let's see, that's going to be minus 9i squared. So that's going to be positive 9, because the i squared. Minus 16. Okay, which is going to be minus 7 over 50 h bar, 7 over 50, that can't be simplified. So that's all our expectation values. Um, so that part is completely solved. Now the next part is to calculate the standard deviation, which can be a little confusing because they also use sigma. 
um, but essentially if you want to calculate um, the expectation value of whatever it's the expectation value of let's just say sub x uh, squared minus the expectation value squared square root this is not the spin matrices this is now a standard deviation so the notation is kind of weird but hopefully that makes sense okay so we've already calculated our expectation value so squaring them is no big deal but what is the expectation value of sx squared and you'll see it's actually they're all the exact same and this will be true for all spin one-half particles but just to show you I'll start with um, s squared you'll just have h bar over 2 the spin matrices times h bar over 2 times that same spin matrices so that's what it means for it to be squared and if you do this you'll find that it's h bar squared over 4 because this comes over and if you multiply these you're just going to get um, your identity so that is all we have to do here and that'll be true for all of these technically times the identity matrix but so that is actually really easy so now it's quite easy to calculate what we want so if we want to find the standard deviation of the x part of our spin well that's going to be the square root of the expectation value like this okay well this is zero so it's going to be the square root of h bar squared over 4 which is obviously h bar over 2 and they're all going to follow the same process here if we want to find the y component so this will be h bar squared over 4 minus this guy squared okay minus negative 12 over 25 h bar squared and uh, to be honest I have not calculated it yet but you can I think that's everyone's okay doing that and sigma z will be calculated the exact same way. And then in terms of the uncertainty principle, well, this is pretty easy to do now. Uh, S sub y. Okay. So this is pretty straightforward to do here. We've already calculated these in the step above. I guess I should be consistent call these sigma. And we've calculated our expectation value so that's no problem. And once you plug these in you'll just find that they do satisfy our uncertainty principle. But I think if you're okay up until this part then the final step is pretty straightforward. So hopefully that helped and if it did please like and subscribe. Thank you.